Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. Today we will talk about the iconic McDonnell Douglas MD-80. The MD-80 is a series of twin-engine, short-to-medium-range, single-aisle, commercial jet airliners, manufactured by McDonnell Douglas since the late 1970s, based in the DC-9 and entered in service on 10 October 1980 with flights operated by Swissair. It can accommodate from 130 to 172 passengers depending on the variant and configuration of the seats. MD-80 is the generic name of the entire program. The actual aircrafts are the MD-81, 82 and 83. Between them they have some differences in flight autonomy and type of thrusters. The MD-87, shortened, version which refers to the DC-950 and the MD-88 which presented a notable avionics update. Another version was the MD-90. The latest in this prolific family was the MD-95 which featured a radical update of onboard avionics, the latest generation Honeywell flight deck, and even more efficient and quieter engines. We then returned, to the Origins, with a shortened version very similar to the DC-930, specially designed for short-haul traffic and high turnover. However, the MD-95 was never marketed under its original name but, since McDonnell Douglas merged with Boeing in 1997, with that of Boeing 717. A total of 2,438 aircraft were produced, it is the third most produced aircraft after the Boeing 737, in production since 1967, and the Airbus A320, in production since 1987. How was the MD-80 born? The goal was, to build the best aircraft for short and medium haul routes. To achieve the result, they started with the choice of engines and focused on the best on the market at that time, two Pratt & Whitney JT-8Ds. After that, the technicians thought of building an aircraft with the engines on the tail and thus have a very, very efficient wing from an aerodynamic point of view. Furthermore, in this way it was possible to reduce the risk of fire and have advantages in terms of acoustic comfort. This solution also has disadvantages with which the technicians clash, a pair of engines in the tail requires a T tail, as for the DC-9, or in any case, higher horizontal planes compared to a conventional aircraft, pity that by doing so you risk running into the very dangerous phenomenon of the deep stall. Also, the engines located behind the wing are subject to swallowing pieces of ice that come off the wing itself. The lift rises to a critical angle, about 15 degrees to 20 degrees, after which the flow on the back of the wing breaks off, the lift decreases while the resistance increases. In an airplane with a T tail, this phenomenon is accentuated by the fact that the tail fletch, which is higher than the wing, is put out of action by the disturbed flow that detaches from the wing and does not allow to reduce stall with pitching movements. Moreover, as if that were not enough since the engines are mounted in the tail, the turbulence that is generated due to these dirty flows could turn them off. Computerized systems were then studied, including the auto brake and other pearls, which for the time were science fiction, to allow the pilot to prevent the deep stall. This aircraft, as well as its predecessor Douglas DC-9, was affectionately referred to by its pilots as Mad Dog, because the rear elevator was composed of two parts not directly connected to the flight controls, but moved aerodynamically via two smaller fins placed on the trailing edge, called control tabs, directly connected to the pilot's controls. 
The result was that the above-mentioned lifts were free to move on the ground and, if the wind conditions were favorable, it could happen that one of the two was raised while the other was lowered, exactly as a dog that has an open ear would look nice. Tip raised and the other pendant. If you like the video, like it and subscribe to the channel.